Episode 2, Warden and Colonial Tanker Uniforms. Hello and welcome to yet another episode of our Uniform History series focused on the game of Foxhole. In our world and at the turn of the last century, the combustion engine and mechanised warfare would give birth to not only one, but two advanced ways of fighting. And with these machines, it gave the men of the old world cavalry and general thrill seekers a whole new way of life. And I imagine in the world of Foxhole, things more or less happen exactly the same way. As the early armoured cars and vehicles were deployed, the first generation of people on either side would produce, maintain and operate them would come into being. It takes a certain set of skills to operate and maintain an armoured vehicle like a tank, and with those skills and conditions comes equipment that can also help with the job. In our world, the clothing these soldiers used was adapted from their present uniforms, alongside with some old world things updated to help with these new tasks. The same can be said about the tankers and armoured car drivers of the Foxhole universe. Warden Padded Boiler Suit once again, we'll just be covering what little we have on display here, followed by the usual evidence and speculate what possibly could have inspired the game's artists with this outfit set. First, the upper body. Then this time we have something unpractical. This uniform has the blue overcoat of the wardens, even though the outfit is called the boiler suit. Look, I apologise for being pedantic here, but by now even you should know this is a coat, not overalls. This is sort of the first time I'm actually disappointed with the creative choice here. I. Uh, in past examples I reviewed, I was willing to let certain choices or limitations lie, but here I've got to say something. A long-skirted coat is a terrible thing to wear when stuck inside a cramped metal box with several other human beings. The potential of getting hurt or killed inside your own tank triples. It's not even worth it for vanity reasons. We shall speak later about the better alternatives the developers and artists could have chosen. We're just going to move on to the next bit. Instead, we've got a few interesting equipment features we can cover here. Attached to the leather belt chest rig, we appear to have the blue and white armoured vehicle flash associated with warden vehicles that is usually imprinted on top of the sides of the vehicles in the game. And opposite that is clearly some sort of vehicle throat mic transmitter used for communication between other vehicles. This confirms that the tanks of the game have some sort of radio communication sets installed inside of them. Now we move on to the headgear of the uniform. The warden tank here appears to be wearing some sort of beret or soft cap with a small cloth peak that can be folded or detached from the cap itself. The two real world inspirations now for this possible fusion headwear is the French 501st RCC black beret and the Prussian M1917 officer veiled cap crusher style. Once again we've got the cockard looking metal identity disc we saw on the Ashanka style of hat of the previous outfit too. Firmly fixed in place of this hat is the vintage radio receiver, ready to pick up transmitter orders while operating the vehicle. We also appear to have a simple improvised cloth mask to protect the commander's breathing from diesel fumes while driving with other vehicles outside in the capot of the tank turret during high speed. Finally, covering the eyes is a pair of tinted dust goggles, which we'll go into more detail with the colonial section. I will add giving the faction with the slower, heavier armed tanks goggles to protect the eyes whilst driving open air at high speed to be some sort of developer joke. <laughs> Colonial Tankman's coveralls. We'll start things off with the body area first. What we have here is an entirely different style jacket which has a zipper system, uh, but it also decently seems padded around the lower back area. This padding prevents minor injury when the crewman is inside a tank in operation, and as I mentioned before, the warden tanks. Uh, the interior will no doubt be cramped and filled with other crew members and ammunition. Another thing to note is the Colonial Shoulder Cape Mantle has returned, and to my surprise it is covering both shoulders now instead of just one. This is clearly a different issue of the item, which now seems to have a lot of variations in the Colonial Army. The top half of this one has a collar and is secured with a press stud rather than the simple ties we see in the battle dress variation. For storage reasons, this new jacket has a breast pocket along with the usual battle rattle for compact maps or places to stash extra gas mask filters. Speaking of padding, the trousers of the lower section also have some around the knees too. Now what is this based on? Tank uniforms in both world wars for combat duty or field medicines of their vehicles were not the dress or barrack uniforms but rather denim overalls or boiler suits. For example, the British Army in the Second World War used the pixie oversuit for operation and other duties. However, the game's uniform is in two parts, rather than the whole piece despite the name. According to concept art notes, this was going to be a whole outfit rather than the two-piece uniform we have here. Now, the jacket clearly resembles the Second World War US Army Winter Combat Jacket. 
Now let's talk about the helmet of the uniform next. This is a padded leather helmet with dust goggles mounted on the top, ready to be pulled down when needed. Dust goggles are nothing new. Having existed since the latter half of the 19th century, they were mass produced and first used by British armed forces in the First World War, fighting in the Middle East, and distributed to vehicle operators and eventually infantry in the Second World War during the campaigns in North Africa. Here are some Second World War II examples. Colony ones seem rounded, perhaps referring to aviator-style sunglasses. Leather helmets for vehicle operation were essential for half of the 20th century in most armies. These helmets have more protection than the alternate beret, being more sturdier to negate some blunt force trauma that can occur inside these vehicles. Here is an independent artist, whose art I'm borrowing now, displaying examples of tanker-focused headgear protectors during the Second World War for most of the armies. And yes, the real-world influence is extremely obvious here. The colonial helmet is based on the M38 US Army tanker helmet. General conclusion. Well, that was exciting, but all sensitive warden players, please leave the room now. I have an issue, obviously, with the warden outfit. Now, as previously mentioned, it is unsuitable for the job. All I can suggest to the developers now is, or if, when they revisit these uniforms, to seriously change the overcoat into something that's more functional for the job of being inside a tank. Either simply turn the default warden capote into a jacket by removing the skirts and taking it up to the waist, or go full hog with my other suggestions. Give the warden something more akin to the real world French tank crews of the 20th century, a black or blue leather coat like this. Or simply give them proper denim style overalls just to make them work better. I suggest you just dyeing them blue. Do something. Or how about this? Instead, let's double down with the warden being more of a traditional theme and make said overalls more resemble like a, what 19th century Vassar would, would you wear instead. As for the colonial outfit, honestly, I think it's pretty much perfect as is. Surprise, really, they didn't even give them aviators. I would suggest perhaps some sort of level gauntlet gloves like we saw with the pixie suit. Next episode, we'll be covering the engine uniforms for both sides. Until now, stay on the side of the road and don't get hit by any lodgy trucks now. And if you are driving, please hit the brakes and save the shirts. Take care.